Hey guys, Kevin here. I wanted to make a quick video on shoulder health. You know, all about, you know, if you're feeling any sort of pain right now, or if you ever had like a shoulder injury currently or in the past, um, how to fix any sort of issue and how to assess any issue that you might have and, and how to go about fixing it and preventing it for the long term. Um, so I've, you know, I've been coaching for almost uh, eight years full time now. And I've seen, you know, so many different things within the gym. And I would say 95% of the time, we can either fix a shoulder issue or at least greatly improve it with these four things or some combination of uh, one of these four things. So, you know, movement is gonna be huge, mobility, and then strength, more specifically, uh, scapula strength and rotator cuff strength, and then our volume and intensity and how quick we ramp that up. So let's dive into each one of those specifically. All right, so the most important aspect to uh, preventing a shoulder injury or fixing a shoulder injury is gonna be moving properly. So when we're inside the gym, you know, take something like a push-up, for example. If we have our shoulder and we're internally rotated into this position, we do a push-up, we're gonna really load our bicep tendon, load our rotator cuff a little bit too much, in addition to, you know, maybe having our elbows flare out to the side. That's one small example, but we can have, you know, many other uh, movements that can cause some issues within, within the gym. Some things that, you know, people don't necessarily think of a lot of times when we do like a clean or a snatch, we we might be having our shoulders come forward when we pull or when we come down from doing like a touch and go rep and into that same internally rotated position. Um, or even, you know, when we're in an overhead position, if we, you know, are locked out and we're forward right there and our shoulders forward, uh, hanging from the bar, same idea, shoulder forward is going to be really rotating, uh, really uh, loading our rotator cuff and bicep tendon. Um, so pretty much almost every single movement that we do within the gym, we're gonna want our shoulders to stay down and back and be able to load you know, the musculature, not the small you know, um, connective tissue uh, when we're, whenever we're doing a movement. So we take like a push up, for example, if we keep our shoulders back, we're gonna be loading the deltoid, the tricep and the pec, whereas if we keep our shoulders forward, then it's gonna load the, the smaller you know, muscle groups there, the smaller connective tissue. So when you start to, you know, if you have any sort of shoulder pain and you start to think about uh, you know, on Tuesday, my, my shoulder was really bothering me Tuesday, morning well when you look back to Monday could it have been you know push-ups could it have been like a, a snatch or a clean when we were getting to this position could it have been some kipping movement where we weren't you know loading our scapula correctly um, and we were loading too much of the rotator cuff could it have been an overhead position could have been uh, many different things but starting to think back to what could have caused that pain or asking a coach asking myself or Casey or any of other other coaches here or any other coaches at Coda you know hey could you watch me you know I've, I've been feeling some pain here could you watch some of my movements not only inside the gym, but also outside the gym. So, you know, I can have somebody move perfectly in here and then have their shoulders back the whole time. And then when they go, you know, outside in their normal day, they're sitting at a desk here, maybe they're driving here. Um, really try to think about those things, not only when you're in the gym, but also when you're outside the gym. All right, the next aspect that I want to go over is going to be mobility, which is also going to be related to movement. If we don't have, you know, correct mobility around the shoulder and our muscle tissue, we're not going to be able to get in the right positions. So when we talk about mobility uh, for the shoulder, our pec might be holding us back, really pulling us forward into an internally rotated position. It might be our trap that's really tight, that's, you know, bounding us up right here, or it might even be our lat that's preventing us from getting in a good overhead position. Um, so one of the ways that I like to assess people and, and try to really get an idea of what's holding them back, real easy. Start to dig into your pec, you know, spend some time there and then do a test retest. See if you feel any difference. Dig into your traps, see if you feel any difference. Dig into your lat, see if you feel any difference. Might even want to do some banded shoulder stretches and just do that on one side to see if it's actual shoulder capsule that's holding you back. Maybe we have some scar tissue in there we need to break up. So mobility is going to be, you know, very important to be able to get into the right positions. We have to be mobile enough and with our tissues to be able to, to set ourselves into those positions, but it's not just in the gym. We also need to, you know, transfer that over to our, our, the rest of our life and, you know, stay in a good posture, good shoulder position, whether we're, you know, sitting at a desk or driving in a car. All right, so the next thing we want to cover is strength in the rotator cuff and in the scapula specifically. So if we don't have the optimal mobility and optimal movement to be able to you know, load the bigger muscle groups, we're going to be loading our rotator cuff and our bicep tendon when we do things like a, you know, a clean or a snatch pull or even like push-ups when we have our shoulder you know, forward. So if we you know, are loading those muscles way too much, they're going to hurt no matter how strong they are. So the first things we need to do is get into those good positions and have the mobility to get into the good positions. But that being said, we want to have have a strong rotator cuff and a strong scapula it's kind of like having really good brakes in your car you don't want to use your you know brakes and have to slam them on to avoid an accident but it's nice to have you know just in case so when we start to talk about you know strength in the rotator cuff and scapula I like two moves the dumbbell external rotation that's for our rotator cuff and then the Powell raise for our scapula on both of these moves I'd like to see a 10% uh, of your strict press for optimal injury prevention for a set of eight 
on our, uh, each one of those moves. So if you can do a set of eight with a nice controlled negative on both the external rotation and on the Powell raise, and it's 10% of your you know, strict press, that's good for minimum uh, injury prevention. Going a step further, I wanna try to get 10% of our bench press um, in order to have optimal performance, which is pretty high for both of these moves. So we actually did this last week in class. We did both the dumbbell external rotation and the Powell raise. So you might have an idea where you're already at, but if you'd like to test it on a set of eight, I'd like to see 10% of your strict press as a minimum for not hurting yourself, and then more like 10% of your bench press for maximum performance. So what that would look like if somebody does, you know, 150 pounds on strict press, I want to see a 15 pound dumbbell for a set of eight. If they do 225 pounds on bench press, I want to see like a 20 or 25 pound dumbbell for maximum performance. All right, so the last thing I want to cover, which a lot of people don't think about, but it's a really simple concept, is when we're talking about volume and intensity, we have to make sure that we ramp up slowly when it comes to how much work we're doing on the shoulder and how much intensity we have. So a lot of times people get all excited, they get super motivated for you know, one reason or another, which is great, but then their intensity looks like this, and we go up and we get too much on the shoulder or you know, any joint way too quickly. I always want volume and intensity to look like this, almost uh, very similar to our linear progression that we're following right now. Um, that's going to be a big reason why people might feel some you know, pain or infl inflammation or get some sort of injury or stay healthy and feel strong and, and uh, powerful for you know, months and months and months and years and years and years. So as you start to assess yourself, um, it could be a combination of many of these, you know, all four of these things or, you know, one or two or three of them. So just start to look at that and self-assess, but always ask myself or Casey or any other code of coaches any questions. Uh, we're here to help. If you're in any sort of shoulder pain or, you know, had a shoulder injury in the past or anything like that, there's so many things we can do to get you back to 100%, get you feeling good. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.